The 1966 World Cup is mainly famous for two reasons. The first being England winning their first, and to date only major honour, and the second being the incredible performances of Portuguese striker Eusebio that won him the Golden Boot. But another great story from the tournament is that of North Korea's cup run. The mysterious communist nation were being represented at the tournament for the first time. Many expected them to be down and out at the group stages, but they subverted the expectations and would pull a few surprises along the way. This is a story of North Korea's 1966 World Cup run. Korea was a nation split in two by the 38th parallel shortly after the Second World War. The North was proclaimed the Democratic People's Republic of Korea in 1948. Two years later, the North invaded the South, which led to the Korean War. The fighting ended in 1953, with over 3 million people losing their lives in the conflict. North and South Korea would continue to be divided by the 38th parallel. North Korea was ruled by Kim Il-sung. He had a policy known as Juche, which roughly translates to self-reliance, and was keen to show the world that the controversial dictatorship installed in North Korea was effective by fielding a team that would succeed at the World Cup. Asian representation at the World Cup beforehand had been minimal. In 1938, the Dutch East Indies would appear at the World Cup in Italy, but only played one game, being knocked out by Hungary. South Korea appeared at the 1954 edition, but would lose 9-0 to Hungary and 7-0 to Turkey, as they exited at the group stage. 16 teams were allowed to enter the 1966 World Cup, but beyond Europe and South America, little representation was allowed. Oceania, Asia and Africa were only allowed one nation between them. African teams withdrew entirely due to a disagreement with FIFA, and there was little interest from Asia, with South Korea refusing to play their qualifying matches in Cambodia. As a result, the playoff to qualify for the World Cup was between North Korea and Australia. Australia were mainly formed of British immigrants and hadn't played an international fixture for seven years. They would face each other twice in Cambodia, with North Korea winning the first game 6-1 and the second game 3-1, going to the World Cup off a 9-2 aggregate scoreline. Little attention was paid by world football to the results, although the FA were not happy. The UK at the time did not recognise the nation known as the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, and feared the ramifications of allowing them to participate. British troops had fought against North Korea in the Korean War, alongside South Korea, and feared the strain this may cause on diplomatic relations. The British government drew up plans to refuse visas to a North Korean national team. However, they were forced to relent when FIFA heard this news. FIFA threatened to move the World Cup to another nation if North Korea were refused entry. Fearing the loss of hosting a World Cup they had prepared so much for, the British government granted North Korea entry. The North Korean football team were invited to meet Kim Il-sung in Pyongyang before heading off to England. Sung wished them good fortune in the tournament and said he would be satisfied with one or two victories. With the odds stacked against North Korea whoever they faced, the draw did not bode well for them. They would be drawn against fellow communist nation, the USSR, who had the legendary Lev Yashin in goal, as well as 1962 World Cup semi-finalist Chile and two-time World Cup winners, Italy. The North Korean delegation would be based in Middlesbrough, with not a single member of their ensemble ever venturing outside their homeland before. All three of their group games would take place at Ersan Park, the home of Middlesbrough FC. The North Koreans stunned locals on the train from London when they burst into song, singing patriotic verses about their homeland. The people of Middlesbrough formed an unexpected bond with the North Korean team. Middlesbrough was a working class town with a struggling side, and the prospect of having World Cup fixtures on their doorstep was a beacon of light for the struggling locals. The squad presented a gift of an embroidered picture of a bird to Middlesbrough's mayor, Jack Boothby. 23,000 fans would attend Ayrson Park to watch North Korea's opening fixture against the Soviet Union. Any hopes of an upset were dashed, with the Soviets running out 3-0 winners. Despite the results, the North Koreans continued to endear themselves to the locals. The fact they played in red just as Middlesbrough did certainly helped, and their fair play drew admiration from the crowds, compared to the tough, physical style imposed by the Soviet Union. In the period before their next fixture, many locals would observe the North Korean squad training, with many seeking autographs. The next fixture was against Chile. The Chileans had also lost their first game, suffering a defeat to Italy. Both sides needed to ensure that they avoided defeat. Chile took the lead with a penalty from Ruben Marcos in the 26th minute. 
The Middlesbrough faithful helped the North Koreans keep the faith, and goalkeeper Lee Chang-myung made a fantastic save to keep his side in the game. With only two minutes left on the clock, North Korea's captain, Pak Swen Zin, headed the ball into the net to level the scores. North Korea had saved themselves right at the death, and it was the first ever time an Asian team had avoided defeat in a World Cup fixture. North Korea faced a monumental task if they were to miraculously find their way to the group stage. They would face Italy. Italy had won two World Cups previously, in 1934 and 1938, and were amongst the favourites to win the tournament. With Italian sides Inter Milan and AC Milan winning recent European Cups, the Italian faithful were keen to see their players deliver on the international stage too. Disaster struck for Italy when their captain, Giacomo Bulgarelli, was injured in a tackle in the first half. With no substitutes at this time, he was forced off, leaving Italy with 10 men. Things would soon go from bad to worse for the Italians. A loose ball on the edge of the Italian box was pounced on by Pak Duik. He slotted the ball into the corner, giving North Korea a shock lead. Italy was shell-shocked. They tried desperately to find an equaliser, but the North Koreans held on, and the game would finish 1-0. Ayrson Park went wild. North Korea had pulled off what many christened the biggest shock in World Cup history. North Korea were on their way to the quarter-finals. If facing Italy was a tough task, then their next opponents would be a nightmare. They would face a Eusebio-led Portugal. Portugal had impressed in the group stages, scoring three goals in all their games. Benfica's Eusebio was one of, if not the best player in the world at the time, so it was some task for the North Koreans to face. North Korea would finally be stepping out of Middlesbrough for the game. They travelled to Liverpool for the fixture, once again singing patriotic songs on the journey there. Many from Middlesbrough followed the North Koreans to Goodison Park to see them in action once more, with some reports saying around 5,000 Middlesbrough fans made the journey. Astonishingly, in the first minute, Pak Swen Jin gave North Korea the lead. With Goodison shocked, North Korea went one better and doubled their lead, with Dong Won Lee tapping the ball into an empty net. With the crowd chanting, We want three, North Korea delivered. Swen Kuk Yang made it 3 0 in the 25th minute. North Korea was shocking the world. They had knocked out one of the favourites and were now on course to knock out another and reach the semi finals. But Portugal were keen to fight back. Eusebio grabbed one back in the 27th minute and scored a penalty shortly before half time to make the teams go in at the break with the scores at 3 2. Eusebio curled a ball into the top corner to level the scores and reach a hat trick in the 56th minute, and three minutes later would score his second penalty to put Portugal in front. Jose Augusto would add a fifth with 10 minutes to go, and that was enough. North Korea were out of the World Cup. North Korea were heralded as heroes by the Middlesbrough faithful, but sadly when they returned home, their status did not last for long. Many of the squad were sent to prison camps as punishment for giving away a three-goal lead. The North Korean squad of 1966 would return to Middlesbrough in 2002 to see a screening of a film about their run, entitled The Game of Their Lives. Shortly after, the players received a hero's welcome at the Riverside Stadium in the build-up to a game against Leeds United. North Korea have only qualified for one World Cup since, where they would go out at the group stages, losing 2-1 to Brazil, 7-0 to Portugal and 3-0 to the Ivory Coast. Despite not qualifying for a World Cup since, much of the information about North Korea's exploits in the World Cup has been typically doctored in favour of the nation, with the truth making way for a narrative that portrays North Korea as world champions. Despite how they were treated upon returning home, the North Korea squad of 1966 will forever be remembered for producing one of the greatest shocks in the history of the World Cup, and for forming an unforgettable bond with the locals of Middlesbrough. Their run in the World Cup was remarkable, and one wonders what might have been had they been able to hold on to their lead against the Portuguese.